and in Acts chapter 2 it says, and then tongues of fire came upon the, upon the men of God. And 120. Why tongues? Why not a cloud? Why not rain or fire? Come on now. You know why? Because it's, what's going to direct your life is your tongue. Your tongue is, is the power of God. Well, everything that happens in our life is through our tongue. He's given us the power in our tongue to speak. And God wants to fulfill your destiny with your tongue. With another man's tongue. With a prophet's tongue. Nothing happens without your tongue. You have to speak things into existence. You are the prophet of your own destiny. Stop complaining. Come on now. About your future. I want to share this with you. Your future lays in your past. Let me say that again. Your future is in your past. What you did in 2016, how you acted and how you behaved in 2016, 2017, 2018, determines your future. Did that Jay Sai, did that Jay Mai? Come on now. Eight May Beck. There's a secret to your destiny. Set the heck for your back. Hello? As you nonsense praat, can you nonsense cry? If you speak wrong, you're going to start to eat the fruit of it. So sit, your, sit the heck by your back. Only speak what is right. Only prophesy what your destiny that you want to see. My wife and I correct each other when we speak. Even if my one son is going downhill, we say, praise God. He's a powerful man of God. He's, he serves the Lord. We will not speak the negative. Why? Because the Holy Ghost won't allow me. When you fill with the Holy Ghost and the power of God, let me tell you, the Holy Ghost will carry you. It will determine your future. The, let me tell you, I don't know some people in here, they've gone through hell and back. They've gone through divorce. But I want to tell you, it's the Holy Ghost that kept you. It's the Holy Ghost that will sustain you. It's the Holy Ghost <coughs> that will bring you into your future. Jesus said, Jesus said to the disciples, go and wait. Do nothing until you are empowered by the Holy Ghost. When they were empowered, they, they faced many trials, tribulations, hardships, but the Holy Ghost, say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, carried them, took them, and put them into those places and situations. And they went, come on, they escaped from prison. Come on, somebody. They escaped from shipwrecks. They, they, they were tried to be murdered and have been caught. But the Holy Ghost, I want to tell you something. Some of you don't know the Holy Ghost. You've got to get to know the Holy Ghost. When you get to know the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will carry you. He'll carry you to a place in your life that you've never been carried by. Let me tell you, God is about to do something amazing in your future. But God is saying to you today that it's time to start to pursue me. Many people pursue things. They are, they are in their comfort zone. They pursue worldly wealth. They pursue their Jaguar. They, they pursue their BMW. They pursue the, the, the comfort of their, and their luxuries, but they don't pursue the kingdom of God. They're worried about their job. They're worried about this. They're worried about, oh, that nice, that nice house, that nice, uh, mooi draper, the, the, you know, that nice uh, lounge street. But the kingdom of God lays ruins. The kingdom of God, the money for the kingdom of God doesn't come in because you want to go buy that new Porsche. We need to put the kingdom of God first, church. I'm not come here to tickle your ears. I'm come here to rick and pluck you rech. Come on now. Because I love God. And I love the kingdom. And I love you. And I don't want you to go the way the world is going. I don't want you to follow the trend of the world. I want you to follow the trend of the kingdom of God. Because one day, 
One day you're going to be in the judgments. God's going to judge us. And he's going to give us according to what we have done on earth. And I want to do great things for God. I don't want to be there in heaven. And the Bible says that we will be over cities of angels. I don't want to just look after one angel. Hello? It's time. To for Anna. Set your hand up in my cup and say for Anna. In Jesus' name. Listen to this. In Jeremiah 20 verse 9 it says, But his word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. Church, I want to tell you something. I want the fire of God to burn and consume my attitude, my, my personality, everything that is not of God in my life. I want the Holy Ghost to consume me like a fire. I want to do the will of God every day, every second of my day. I don't want to do the will of William. I want to do the will of my father. Church, I want to tell you something. The, the very thing when the devil can't get you and, and bind you to things, he starts to steal your time. He makes your time be wasted. You, you sit on TikTok. Mm -hmm. You see, sit on Nick Knock. You sit on Facebook. Facebook. Come on now. You sit on, come on now, you sit on uh, uh, all these media. That's where the devil is getting you. You're not in the presence of God. You're on your mobile. Go to your mobile and look for the last month or the few weeks how many hours you spent on the media. I want to get you off the media, church. So that you can spend time in the presence, spend time in the Word of God, and, 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 and get out of that TV. Get out of TV. It's robbing you three, four hours a day. Get out of your TV. I give you a brick today. Frauens, I give you a brick today. Come on now. We are wasting, you know, we sit church, we sit and watch TV. They're, they're cursing our God. They're cursing, they're, they're showing stuff that we shouldn't be looking at. And we sit, the deck sit, we are sanctified, we are saved. And we, we, our eye gates and our ear gates are full of rubbish. And it ruins our marriage. It ruins our relationship with our children, with our grandchildren. Let me tell you something that uh, you can laugh or like you want, but the TV is a sign to distract you from God and to steal your time with God. When loss and your calling, many of you are going to lose the calling, the purpose of God, the destiny of God in your life because you're watching too much TV. You know what I can do for three, four hours? How I can soak in God's presence? I soak. My wife and I soak. When we get home tonight, right now, we are so traveling all the time. We soak in the day. We soak in the afternoon. We soak. When we have gaps, we go onto our bed and we soak with God. We spend time with God. We cry out to God for this nation. We cry out to God for the nations of Europe. We cry out to God that God would touch them, the multitudes with salvation. Church, you need to get hungry again for God. You need to call out God and sometimes you need to cry out, God, help this nation. Where's your heart, church? Where's your heart? Is it in your luxury? Is it in what you have in this earth? It's all going to go away. It's going to go. It's temporarily. We must pursue God. Could you imagine if we're all pursuing God at the same time, how God can change nations? Get rid of your TV, spend time in the Bible, spend time in reading Christian books, spend time in, 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 in uh, uh, pursuing God. It's so important. We are just living a luxurious life, no spirituality that's in our life. How much time do you pray? How many, uh, you know, 10 minutes, 5 minutes? But you're on the media full time. You're on your TV three, four hours a day. We need to wake up. We need to catch a wake up. I want to wake you up. 
And you need to take, uh, what, what am I doing in the day? What am I doing in my life? What, where is my time spent? We need to be spending time crying out to God. We need to spend time crying out for our nation, for our family, for our loved ones. But we just are lekker, lekker. And it's time, church, to grow up. It's time to grow up to be the man of God, the woman of God that God called you to be. Hi, I'm hungry for God. I'm hungry. You know, I'm saying, God, come on, Jesus. Come on, you're too slow. Let's go, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. The Bible says God looks to and fro upon the earth. Whom can I send? I said, Yera Isaac. Isaac, Yera, Isaac, Yera. Gebruik my Yera, gebruik my. Kijk nie verder nie, Yera. Ek is jou man. Ek is jou man. Kijk nie verder nie. Jy sê, jy moet, jy moet haragad wees met die Yera. Is that right? Is that okay? Yeah, you must, like, you must be like Jacob. You must wrestle with God. You must wrestle with God and say, God, I am your man. Lord, I may not have everything you need, but I know, Lord, you and me can change the world. Lord, if I, you on my side, I can do anything. Lord, if I walk in a mall, you and me are the majority. Come on, church. We need to be harachat mediyerah. We need to be stubborn towards the world and, and, and be, have a great heart towards God. And sometimes there's a sacrifice. The Bible says that we are a living sacrifice unto the Lord. What are you sacrificing? Are you sacrificing anything? Or are you just letting the, the, the devil just bring in entertainment upon entertainment upon entertainment in your life so that you live a life of entertainment? You need to rebuke entertainment. You stop watching movies that are, stop watching TV and stop watching movies. Start to pursue the presence. Pursue God. And you will see how God will lift you up. You will see the favor of God. The Bible says, they that seek God and wait wait on the doors of the Lord, they shall find favor. And God will give you favor when you've never had. You will have success in your business. You will have success in your ministry. You will have success in all that you do. Why? Because you're pursuing God. And God will bring success. Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, Seek first my kingdom. And my righteousness and all these other things shall be given you. It's time for Anna. We in July. I pray that many of you would take this on board, this word, that you would start to change. And you'll start to change things in your life. Because let me tell you something. You, what God has, the prophetic words that's on in your life and on your life right now, you are, you are slowing it down. It's like, the, it's like the Israelites when they went to, to the promised land, they slowed down, they had to go around 40 years again. And sometimes we need to get to a place where we have to speed up our own situation. When we start to walk right with God, when we start to pursue God, when we start to bring the, 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 the purpose and the plan that God has for us into fruition. Because God has His hand upon you, whether you like it or not. He has a purpose. He has a desire for your life. Just as you, He gave you that desire. He gave you that, that anointing for your purpose, for your future. Father, I pray for, Lord, that your word in my heart will burn like a fire. In Jeremiah 3, 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God is calling, telling you to call on him. God wants to show you things that he has for you. A plan. Praise God, God uses prophets. Praise God, God uses friends and pastors and people. But I want to tell you, God wants to speak to you in your secret place. It's time to develop a deep hunger for God. 
It's time to, do, to pursue God. It's time to say, God, forgive me for all my, 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 my days of lack and my days of uh, entertainment, Lord. And, and Father, renew a right spirit in me. Lord, help me, Lord, that I'll be a living sacrifice for you. Church, we are on this earth maybe 100 years, 80 years, 70 years, you know. It, it's very short compared to eternity. It, uh, our life is like, like from this place. My, that's our life. The rest is eternity. What you do on this earth will be rewarded in eternity. And we're playing around. Get serious with God and God will get serious with you. Come on, church. There are more churches in the world now than there's ever been churches in the history of mankind, but less impact. Less impact. It's time, church, for the church to make impact. And I thank God for your pastor for souls. But it goes beyond just the church. We need to get out on the streets. We need to, we need to, we need to pursue. We need to go. We need to say, like, with, with, in the, in the January, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming in January. We need to get as many souls saved from here to January. What are we going to do? Knocking on neighbors, praying for people. You need to get a strategy for souls. It ain't just going to come in. We need to pursue being bigger and better than what we have. Church have good sermons, but no power. Many churches are just tickling your ears. They're just preaching. They're not, they're not healing the sick. They, they're not, I've raised the dead by the grace of God. I've raised a man from the dead. But, uh, the, the blind see, the deaf hear. We pulled out people out of the wheelchair by the grace, not because of me, but because I, I believe God can do it. I believe it. I believe he can heal. I saw cancers being healed. I've seen uh, many miracles in our ministry. Many. Because you know what? When I started, I saw none. I laid hands on 100 people. None got healed. And I uh, carried on and I carried on and I carried on. And then suddenly a uh, man got out of the wheelchair. Suddenly cancers were healed. Suddenly a blind man got healed. So, <laughs> suddenly a person that was deaf in both ears, yeah, in Johannesburg, got healed. Church, God is real. You know what? When you do a miracle, it speaks louder than a thousand sermons. When we do a miracle, it says that God is alive. That God is real. It cannot deny God. A miracle pr proves that God is alive. So it's time for us, everybody, even you. When, I, when my children were small, I was so arm geweest that the arm of mense for my sorry gevoel het. Ja, I was so arm, I was arm, bro. My dad had eight children, and he, and, he, and, he was, and he was poor. When the ice cream van came, when it goes ding a ling a ling a ling a ling my dad said, son, when the noise is there, then it means that the ice cream uh, uh, truck is empty. <laughs> Hello? My, my dad bought me, like, you know, in those days, they bought you the, that guns, that six pop, you usually have a, like a snap and a pop up. When we finish and lazy, my dad would take it, and next Christmas, you give us the same one. And you'll package it nicely because you'll unpack it really nicely because he knows what he's going to do. Church, I want to tell you something. God can take you from poverty to traveling the nations of the world. God can take you from a drug addict and to preach the gospel. God can take, let me tell you something. Don't put God in a box because God's about to turn your world uh, the right way up. Uh, God's about to turn your marriage the right way. Right, come on somebody. But we need to pursue him. We need to pursue what God has for us. Because if we don't pursue God, the devil will pursue you, and you will get into trouble. Matthew 3, 11, he says, I baptize you with water, but there shall come one that will baptize you in the fire. I want the fire, God. I call on fire in this house. I call on the fire of God for what God has for yourselves. It's bigger. Come on, it's time 
that God caused your, 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 your vision to expand. The vision is expanding as I speak right now. You see, the apostles of old, they didn't have banners and TVs and, and networks. All they had was the raw fire of God. We need the raw fire of God that miracles, signs, and wonders will follow the preaching of the word. Pastor, pastor's wife, you lay hands every Sunday, lay hands on the sick. Every Sunday so you can activate yourself in the miraculous. And then you'll see uh, uh, people standing down the road waiting for the, the seventh service. Come on now. It's time. I remember my children were small and 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 uns was so arm in story, ne? We couldn't even afford to take them to the doctor. But thank God for the power. The power of God is real. I can share a few stories about the power. When you're poor, you know and you learn about the power of God. There's nothing God cannot fix. I look at look at my beautiful wife, how he fixed her. For Anna. Hallelujah. Yeah, you moet it, you moet it be beer, bro. That work, that work, God is good. My children will be sick and they say, Daddy, Daddy, I'm sick. Dad, I've got a headache. I say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Now in Jesus' name. How you feel? No, Dad. Wow, feel good, Dad. My son falls. I say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And he say, oh, it's, Daddy, thank you. So one day, Say one day. My, my youngest son's in bed on a, a Monday morning. And he goes, <laughs> Daddy, I'm sick. <laughs> Don't pray for me, Daddy. <laughs> he knew the power of God. He said, he said, Daddy, I want to I wanna stay out of school today, okay? Don't pray for me. I said, okay, only this day. But tomorrow you go to school. Be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, no, Dad. You see, you need to train up your children by the example that you are. I want to give you another amazing testimony about my, my one child. He said, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to have a marriage like you and Mommy. You see, we are the salt and the light of our children. We the example that they look at as Christians. Come on now. The, if you it ain't working at home, it ain't going to work out there. My wife and I, one day we got retrenched. You see, everything happens for a reason in your life. You know one thing I understand about God? Aris, God loves me. He loves you, Aris. He loves you with everything that He has. He loves you. And if you know that God loves you, you know that God knows everything that's happening in your life. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, it says, Lean not on your own understanding, but put your trust in God. And there was a time where, and those scriptures really resonate with me, and, 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 and I know that God loves me. So whatever I go through, and sometimes I would think, Why am I going through this, God? What did I do wrong? I would repent upon a repentance, just in case. But it's not that you have to go through. It's like Joseph had to go to the pit. He had to go through Potiphar's. He had to go through the jail to get to the Pharaoh. Come on, somebody. You've got to go the journey that God sets out for you. Why? Because in Romans chapter 9, he says, He's a potter and you are the clay. But the fire of God, the anointing of the Holy, will sustain you. The anointing will keep you. The anointing will carry you to your destination. All you need to do is hold on. Because one thing you need to know, God loves you. And if God loves me, 
He knows everything that's happening in my life. So my wife and I, we were retrenched, and there was times we didn't even have food in our house. Nothing. Not even a, a tea bag. Not even a slice of bread. Nothing. And the next day was school, and my son was trusting God for some fruit, uh, because they're doing something at the school, and they have to bring a fruit. We had, um, my sons would come to me, and, Daddy, Daddy, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And I would say, listen to the faith words. Uh, we're going to eat just now, son. And so I, my wife was crying because we had nothing. We wouldn't use credit cards. We'd cut up the credit cards. Because we cut up the credit We're trusting God. We're not, because it's easy to rip out a credit card. Come on, somebody. That's not faith. That's faith in a credit card, not in God. We decided we're not going to live, and we're not going to tell our family that we're battling that we don't have food. Because God is a God of His Word. The righteous shall never go begging for bread. I want to tell you some stories so that you know where I've come from and, and how we, <laughs> first time I'm preaching here. So you need to understand, we have gone through some stuff. And so I said, I grabbed my wife's hand and I uh, 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 said, let's go praise God in the lounge. So we started to praise God and worship God and praise God and worship Him and glorify Him. And not, ah, here they don't us Aram near. I just say, God, you're the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Messiah, the true living God. The, the Lord, and we just started worshiping and started praising Him, started glorifying Him. And then suddenly, say suddenly. Somebody knocked on our door. And the guy said, listen, y'all, but just... I was going past you, and the, the Holy Spirit said, I must come see you guys. How are you doing? Watch this. You must be a faith man and woman. How are you doing? I said, no, we're good. Praise God. We're, we, we're amazing. You know, we are good. You see, because I knew in my heart, if this man came sent by God, he knows exactly what he sent you to. You see, you need to speak faith words. Faith is what you speak. The Bible says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, say to the mouth, speak, let your tongue, come on now, the fire, the tongue, speak to the mountain, be thy removed. And so the guy, when he left, he put a whole lot of money in his hand, and he shook my hand and left a whole lot of money in my hand. And I went, oh, wow, praise God, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then we could buy out sun fruit. We could put the lights on and blah, blah, blahs. Come on, church. God is good. God will bring you to times and moments. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wasn't saved outside of the fire. Come on now. They were saved inside the fire. And sometimes you've got to get in the fire. You got to get in that place where they say, "I remember our car was going to ta be taken away." Remember, and I think they took the wrong car. What happened? <laughs> what? No. Yeah, they thought they took the car. We had to tell them that they never took the car. Come on, somebody, you got to be honest. Now watch this. Watch this. I want to talk about living out of the pocket of God. Deborah and I, we travel the world. We live out of the pocket. Nobody funds us. Nobody, blah, blah, blah. We trust God. We live out of the pocket. We don't have a salary. You can look after the end of the month. We just trust God wherever we go. Because we want to do the will of God. We want to do the purpose of God in our lives. And I want to tell you something. We weren't filled with the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost and the, the anointing that God put on our lives. And it's because of God we can do that. Believe you me, I would have given up long ago. But you have to live in a life where you trust God for everything. You, you put in your trust in your TV. You put in your trust in your entertainment. You need to pursue God. Ladies, go home and throw a brick in that the TV. Come on, somebody. You turn that TV off. Uh, you know, use the TV for the glory of God, not for the devil's things. Play worship through your TV. Play Christian movies through your TV. But don't use it. Don't even watch the news because it's brainwashing. We need faith. And it wants to bring fear in your house. 
We don't watch news. We don't watch TV. We've given it up. We just pursue God. We rest in God. Sometimes eight hours, I re- but not, not that I'm bragging. I'm just saying so, so that you can pursue something. Four hours, two hours, one hour. Just uh, lay in his presence. The Bible says here, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And God wants to strengthen you for the task that lays ahead. God needs you. God needs every one of you to fulfill his plan. I don't want to watch survival and awakenings on the TV. I want to be in the forefront. I want to be in the forefront with God. I don't want to watch it and say, wow, wow. No, I want to be the laying hands, casting out demons, uh, healing the sick. Come on. I don't want to watch it on TV. I want to be in the forefront of what God is doing in the world today. But you know what? It's a price to pay. It doesn't come easy. Sometimes you need to pray eight hours a day. Until your tongue, you drink water. You get your jaws get so. Come on, church. Stir yourself up in your most holy faith. Pray in tongues. You don't know what to pray, but the Holy Ghost will pray the perfect prayer. It's time to get on fire for the Messiah. Come on. We are God's flames, Hebrews 1, 7. We are the flame of God on the earth. The Holy Ghost is about to visit your house, your home, your business, your children. Come on, your community. Come on, through you. Get on fire. Call down the fire of God on your life. Live for God. People walk into church as sinners and they go out sinners. Nothing changes. Why? Because they've lost the anointing. Churches have lost the, the, the anointing of God. And people come, uh, Christians come in and out of church day by, <coughs> Sunday by Sunday, week by week, month by month, and they still with their sin in their life. They've not changed. There's no cry for repentance. You don't cry for help. I used to be a drug addict. I used to cry out to God. God, rid me of this drug. I used to be a drug addict. I used to be a drug dealer. And then when I gave my heart to leave, suddenly something happened in my heart. It didn't happen. About six months it took me to, to stop the drugs. Every night I would throw the drugs out my window. And the next morning I would go out looking for my drugs. You know, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And I would just hoi my drugs. And the next night, same thing. And then the next morning, running out. And I said, Lord, promise tomorrow. And I would shout out in my car, Lord, change me. Help me, Jesus. I know you created me. Change me. And if you start to cry out to God, change me, Lord. Help me, Lord, change me. You see, if you're stuck in a sin, let's say, for instance, I'm going to give you an example of pornography, which is very, 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 very big, even in the church. You see, the more you feed something, it'll grow. The more you starve it, it will die. So if you know that you're stuck or, or, or addicted to something, stop it. Stop looking. Don't have uh, 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 stuff on your phone. Put your phone somewhere. Put your iPad or whatever. Do. Put it away that you can't read and call out to God and lay in your bed and rather praise God. Start praising until you fall asleep. Read the Bible instead of watching on your phone. Come on now. If you really want to change, you will call out to God and God will help you change. And so it's time for action, our action that we need to do. People and pastors today don't even pray for the sick anymore. Preachers have lost the fire. 
they've they, they got eloquent words and they know how to tell stories. But there's no fire. There's no miracles. There's no blind people seeing, deaf people hearing. Church, I've, I've, I've experienced this in my own life. Not that I'm better than anybody, but I'm pursuing for greater miracles. Come on. I'm pursuing right now that limbs will grow. Come on. You'll have no arm, and then suddenly your arm will develop. Come on, church. God is the creator. He's the creator of all things. He can create new eyes, new arms, new brain. Come on, church. I'm telling you, there's a revival that's about to take place on planet Earth that they would see a whole leg grow what all over the world through the TV screen. They will see a person and how it will develop and it will create a leg. God will do that. I'm telling you, there will be undeniable miracles. I believe that the world will, will fall on their knees and repent and serve our God. We need to think out of the box. Pastor, think out of the box. Think out of the box with your ministry, your vision of what the Lord has for you. Many churches are operating in talent and skills, but not the anointing. They are very, very skillful and very talented, but there's no anointing. As you said to me the other, this, just now, you went to a church and there was no anointing. There's all the other things, but there's no anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the burden. It's the anointing that will carry you to your destiny. God has anointed you for a purpose. But if you're not flowing with the anointing, you're staggering, you're delaying the anointing that God put on your life. God is calling you to pursue Him. And He wants to make you successful in your business. Why? So that you can... Um, uh, have a mandate to bless the kingdom. Because God didn't give you a business so that you can have a 6,000 rand, 6 million rand house, 10 million rand house. How many people are starving? I'm not saying to have a nice house. Yes, have a nice house. But really get ridiculous? I know people that have 10 million rand houses and have lost everything. I know people that have gone to millionaires and multimillionaires that have lost lots in dollars, pounds, euro. Let me tell you something. When you weigh off the side, the, it gives the devil a, a foothold in your life. And God knows how to bring you back to your knees. Come on now. If we don't pursue the things of God, God bless you. Because one day you said, God, you are my partner. And you rejected that. When you were in dire straits, God lifted you up and brought you up. And you're not the blessing that God called you to be for the kingdom of God. Many people are consumed in their own comfort zone. My luxury, my status, my car I drive, the, the, the Nikes, the whatever. I don't even know what all the... Names are of the, this is the, one of the cheapest Nikes I could get in London. It was on a sale. So I thought, oh, why not, William? Treat yourself. But the other one is just common, 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 common. Unless somebody buys me a nice, you know, name brand, praise the Lord. But I'm happy with who I am because of the anointing. I know who I am in Christ. I don't need a Nike. I don't need, somebody told me a very expensive shoe was like, I don't know how many thousand rand. This guy was walking, walking in his church with it. You know, the pastor, I mean, there was like 10,000 rand for a shoe. I'll claim with his own shoe, I'm telling you. He's walking and strutting his stuff with his shoe name, the other name and the lacquer name. I mean, just what he wore was like 50,000 rand. I'm thinking, Lord, really, is it we got, got to that place? I think the furthest I'll go is Nike. I think it's the cheapest brand. I don't like Nike because they don't love Jesus. Come on.
churches don't care about the poor anymore. They stop feeding. They stop caring. It's all about their vision, all about their vision. And many of churches, let me say, some have vision and others have television. Get out of the television. And get into the vision of God, the purpose of God. I want God to cut your hearts today. I want God to change your life today. I only have one session to do it by the Holy Ghost. That God would cut in your hearts to love Him, to serve Him, to die for Him, to sacrifice for Him. Love your wives. Wives, submit as to your husband as unto the Lord. God didn't say submit to your husband because he's a good guy, because he doesn't watch TV, because he... You think in your heart, ladies, I can't uh, submit myself to this thing. He's, he swears, he, 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 he's irritable, he's uh, angry all the time, he's uh, negative. Submit, and you'll see how God will heal your marriage. One woman came to me one day, Pastor, and said, Pastor, Pastor, I was all 10 years old. And my, my man, he didn't have the irony. And I got a revelation. Not abomination, a revelation. <laughs> and I said to him, Weet jy hoe kom, mevrou? I said, hoe, hoe kom, pastoor? He said, jy gaan soos a heks aan by die huis te soekom. <laughs> oh, pastoor, hoe kan jy so? Ja, I said, as jy soos Jesus was, so jy lang al gered word. He would have been saved long ago. If you, if you acted like Jesus, if you were the salt and the light and the submissive wife, he would turn to Jesus two years, two years when, you, when you got saved. But because you like, you're going to act like a witch at home. <gasps> Pastor, I'm going to go to the church to actually praise the year. People say, I'm going to leave the church and say, that's the year. You see, sometimes it's not that you leave the church. It's the church leaves you. You think you're leaving the church. But it's actually the church is growing in God so much that you're saying, Oh, I don't, the ons kak het for Anna. Yeah, praise God. Praise God it says for Anna. And so we need to come to that place in our life where we don't serve a church, but we serve God, and we, we, are, we are planted in the house of the Lord. And some Christians are pot plants. If you're planted, you'll stick through, 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 through hardships and difficulty because there are storms. There are things that you're not going to like. There are things that you're not going to agree with. But let me tell you something. Sometimes the storms are good for your character. Because God brought you into this house, stay in this house, grow in this house, and you will see one day, you must probably be one of the pastors in this church because you grew in this church. If you run this church, that church, that, you'll ne you're no good to be used because you've not ever been planted and gone through storms in your life. Don't become a pastor if you cannot handle storms. Because we face many storms. See, quickly, the Holy Ghost is unstoppable when you make Him the Lord of your life, when you make Him the leader of your life. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will show you the things that are yet to come. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. He will guide you. He will nurture you. He will uphold you. He will carry you in times of troubles. We need the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in our life and in the influence in our marriage. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Many churches are operating, as I said, on talents and skills. I pray the fire of God in this church. God wants the fire to fall in this ministry. Get ready. God will bring his fire back to the church if we will just call out to him and call out to him. Lord, touch 
my heart. Fill me with your fire in our home, in my marriage, in my children, in my church. Lord, fill my pastor with your fire for what you have for our destiny. God will compel people back to the altar. God wants to compel you to come to the altar before the Lord that you will receive the fire of God for what He has for you. Because God has challenged many of you, and I want to say it straight, many of you have backslidden. Many of you know with, with the conviction of the Holy Spirit that you're not in the place that you were at once when you got saved. You are hungry for the Word. You couldn't uh, help stopping yourself speaking about God, speaking about salvation, speaking and reading God's Word and testifying and sharing and talking about the Word. You and your husband sharing the Word with one another. Many have fallen away. And the only thing that you're committed to is coming to church and you think it's okay. It's time to become on fire for God again so that you can touch nations for God. I haven't got a vision for an area. I got a vision for nations. Why? Because God promised me in Psalms chapter 2 verse 8, cry out to me for the nations and I will give you the nations. Give me the nations, Lord. Come on, shout out. Say, give me the nations, oh God. I want the nations. Give me the nations. You said it. I agreed with it. And it shall be done. Get radical with God again. Start to prophesy over the nations. Start to prophesy over your destiny, over your purpose, for what God has. Think big. Prophesy big. You're the prophet of your own destiny. Me and my household will serve the Lord. My son, my son Joel will serve the Lord. My son Joshua will serve the Lord. My son Billy will, will serve the Lord. My son Daniel and their wives and my grandchildren, they will serve the Lord. The Bible says, call the things that are not as though they are. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the weak say, I am strong. See, you need to prophesy. You need to prophesy of your own destiny, of your own purpose. And the Holy Ghost will tell you what. You will get an urge in your spirit to say something. And don't just say it. Prophesy it. Declare it and decree it. And it shall come to pass. Don't stand with your mouth shut. Open your mouth and prophesy. God will come through for you. You see, when I look at the state of the church today, I travel the world and I go to many churches and I don't see the fire of God in the churches. I don't see God moving in many churches. And I wonder what's happening with the church. And I say, God, aren't you a consuming fire? What happened, Lord? What happened with your people that we need to live in the fire of God? The servants are ministers of the flame of fire of God. We need to be on fire in our house. Throw things, go home today and go throw videos, movies, your prescriptions to bad stuff. Block it, finish it, switch it all. Netflix, what flex, who flex, just get rid of it and pursue God. And you phone me in November and you tell me how radically your life has changed. You will phone me and you will tell me on Fleer's book. You will say, um, oh, it's William Mitchell London and Deborah Mitchell London on Fleer's book. 
You will phone, you'll WhatsApp me, you'll whatever, and you'll tell me, William, I did what you said, and things have changed. My marriage has changed, my finances, my business, everything. Why? When you start to pursue God and you seek kingdom first, God will put you first. He'll put your situation first. But it's time to get hungry. And you know, sometimes you need to be before God and say, Here, I not hunger for you. Mark my hunger via here. Come on, be honest with God. God knows that you've lost your hunger. May God knows that you've backslidden. Say, Lord, I repent from a black, backslidden state. Help me, Lord. Fire me up, Lord. Help me, Lord. And, pull, and, and the Bible says, Isaiah 40, they that wait upon, and start to wait upon the Lord. Start to lay on your couch. Put the TV off. Put maybe soaking music and start to pursue God. And you will see your life. You'll see things that are out of alignment start to come in alignment when you start to. Why? Because now you're connecting to, to God in an amazing way. And God will break open the heavens on your behalf. I don't want to. I'm going to finish now. Thank you, G. I'm just going to have a look. I want the fire. I want the anointing. Come on, church. I want all that God has for me in my lifetime so that I can impact earth so that God will get the glory. It's your season. It's your choice. God will never override your choice. Lord, we just thank you for tonight, you know, this morning. Thank you for what you're doing in this church. Pastor, I don't know how we're going to do it. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to the Lord right now, wherever you are. Can the band come up? Can the band come up? Do you know of a, a song about the fire? Light the fire or a fire song? Just slow, just softly so I can minister to the people. If you desire the fire, if you're really, really serious about your life changing towards the Lord, I want to tell you, you going, God is going to do some stuff. He might remove some things. He might tell you to do some things. He might even tell you to give up some stuff. Because he wants to draw you. I want to also share the Holy Spirit said to me today, right now, he said to me, son, tell them that there are people sitting right now that are wanting to give up. Jy wil opgooi. Ek meen opgee. Daai jy ook, nee? Hallelujah. You want to give up. You say, I'm not going to carry on the way I am. I'm going to give up church. I'm going to give up believing. I'm going to give up because this, this churchy, churchy stuff is not working for me. There's people here today that the Holy Spirit is saying to me that you're going to give up on your marriage. You are going to tell your husband or tell your wife, we're going to move on. We're going to separate. Your marriage is on the rocks. Your finances are on the rocks. But I want to tell you something. The decision you make this morning is going to radically change your situation and your circumstance. And God is coming in as a rescuer, as a lifesaver in your life. God says, by His Spirit, give me a chance. Over the next few months, and you will see what I will do for you. So shout out to God and say, Lord, fill me with your fire. Lord, I release right now the fire of God upon your people. I baptize them with your fire right now. Receive it right now. Receive it. Receive the baptism of fire over your life, over your marriage, over your business, over your job. I release fire, fire, fire. In Jesus' name, say I receive it.
Every eye closed, every head bowed. There's some people that want to recommit their life to Jesus this morning. There's some people that have come here to see what this is all about. And they don't know if they die right now. If you die right now, will you go to heaven? If you're not sure. And there's people that say, if I die right now, I know I won't go to heaven. If you're not sure, just slip up your hand quickly. Thank you. 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 I want to pray with you. I want to pray. Can you just stand where you are right now? Can you just stand those that put their hand up? Thank you. Thank you. Can every one of us pray this prayer with them? Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus died and rose again. Lord, forgive me of all my sins and all my unrighteousness. I receive you, Lord, as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. My name is now written in the Lamb's book of life. I am saved. I am born again from this minute on in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a good hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And your wife, where's your wife? Where's the wife? Hallelujah. Stretch your hands out. Say, Father, we bless this couple. Father, thank you for giving these pastors to us. We bless you. We bless all that you do for us. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give them a good hand for... Thank you, Lord. You're amazing. I don't know you very well, but you're amazing pastors. You are amazing, chosen by God. Because greater things are about to come your way. Change is coming saith the Lord. I'm going to come down there so that we can be on the same level. Because when I start to prophesy, I need a catcher behind them. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the man and woman of God. We thank you for their hearts. We thank you for their cries. And this is what the Spirit of the Lord says, son and daughter, for I've seen the tears and the hardships and the difficulties that you've gone through in the marriage concerning the family, concerning situations and circumstances, and even the frustrations that you've gone through, says the Spirit of God. But the Lord said, I did it for a purpose and a reason and allowed it to happen 